Right then, now what I want to do is I want to carry on with the layers uh, lectures and I want to just start off with the same image that we ended off with in the last video. All right, so here we go. We have the image as you remember seeing it. And now what I want to do is I just want to demonstrate some of the things that I talked about in the last movie, such as turning layer visibility on and off and back on again. Okay, so now as we scoot down through the layers here, so here we go, I have this as my currently active layer, all right? Uh, now I have my uh, north to the future text layer as my currently active layer. Now, if I want to, and I don't want to get into a whole lot of things about type and text and all that kind of stuff, but if I wanted to edit this uh, editable text layer at this point in time, one of the ways I can do that is just to double click on the big letter T in the layers panel. So if I were to double click on that, all right. Now I have to wait until the type tool kind of, uh, I, I guess, initialized. All right. So now that's why it took a couple of clicks and all that kind of stuff. Notice my cursor outside of the text area is the move tool. Although it is the type or text tool in the tool panel, when I get my cursor close to the text, my cursor changes to an I-beam. And if I wanted to now, I could actually either hit delete or click and add a word, take out a letter and all that kind of stuff. Up across the top, we can see the font that I'm using, the family that I'm using, um, the font size, what kind of anti-aliasing, the alignment, the color and all that kind of fun stuff. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of that just to get out of that. Now, down here is a, another text layer and... Um, this one here has been rasterized, all right? But again, rasterized just means taking it from vector and turning it into pixels, all right? Okay, and I have my blue flower layer down here that is just sitting in that area there. There's my totem pole, all right? Now, as I scroll down a little bit more, you'll see here is my statue guy, all right? And over here, is a layer mask. All right. Now, something else, I know I've mentioned it in the past, this is an adjustment layer. All right. We can tell that it's an adjustment layer because of the little icon down here. That's a histogram, so that tells me it's a levels adjustment layer. And by default, all adjustment layers come, when they're created or generated, they come with a layer mask. Okay. A white layer mask reveals everything on the layer. It's as if it's not there. All right, it's, it's when a layer mask is white, it's as if that layer mask does not exist. But as soon as we have some black stuff on here, now we're starting to hide some of the stuff that's on the layer. So you're looking at this image here and you're saying, well, Johnny, you know, the, the, the object here is the statue and this looks identical to the statue so what is it you're hiding because the rest of it's just transparent stuff i'll show you what i'm hiding i don't know if i i mentioned this but there was a little bit of a fringing thing going on around this guy and it was just the anti-aliasing soft transitional edge that was picked up from its background a little bit of a line around him. So I didn't like that. So what I did was I loaded this layer as an active selection. And then I contracted by going under the select and then modify. And then there was a contract and I contracted it by one pixel, I believe. And then I clicked on the add layer mask icon and that created this layer mask contracted just a little bit to hide that little fringing thing. All right, if I want to temporarily disable this, all I have to do is hold down the shift key and click on this. There you go. Do you see that little line? That little line was bothering me. So I figured if I was to load the statue as an active selection and then contract it and then, you know, add the layer mask, I would get rid of that. and. Yes, that's a true statement. I did get rid of that. 
All right. Now, as we come down a little bit further here, again, I'm going to just talk quickly about the uh, levels adjustment layer. And one of the things that goes on with adjustment layers is it will affect the layer below and every other layer below as well. If I just applied a, le a regular levels adjustment by going under image adjustments levels, when I had this layer, the cruise ship layer, as the active component in the layers panel, then the levels adjustment would have only affected this guy here. Okay, but since I used an adjustment layer, which allows me to always go back and make an adjustment, nothing is permanent. All right, uh, that's why I wanted to use the adjustment layer just in case. All right, I wanted to uh, darken a little bit more or lighten a little bit more or whatever. All right, um, but I didn't want to darken the Sitka Alaska layer, so I had to do something known as clipping, and you can tell that the layer's been clipped by the little downward arrow here. So we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a later video. All right, just to let you know or show you, I can turn the layer visibility off, and then I can turn it on, and it's not a whole lot of, you know, huge difference, but it's enough to make a difference. All right, and when you're editing your images, you don't necessarily need to make six or seven really strong adjustments to get an overall end result. A lot of times, six or seven small adjustments make a better image. All right, there we go. So now I'm just going to close this guy off. All right, and you can see that I have this little asterisk here that tells me that I've made a change or I've changed something in my document since I last opened it. And I'm going to be asked when I close if I want to update or save and all that stuff, and I'm going to choose not to. So I'm going to close this guy off by going File, Close. Here's that dialog box that says Save Changes to This Before Ch No, and I'm just going to close that off. Now, we're going to be getting the next image is going to show up, Spiral. There we go. And I want to talk quickly about layers and such. Okay, now, before I do this, let me go and get this other image that I prepared, all right, that deals with talking about layers, all right? Now, I think the easiest way for a lot of us to really start to understand layering, all right, uh, we have to go back to our elementary school days when um, our teachers used, before digital, our teachers used overhead projection systems. All right, so I'm going to uh, go back to the days when I was in school and my teacher would use the overhead projection system similar to these. All right, and then the teacher would lay down something on a clear miler and whatever was here would get projected through this onto the wall so everybody could see it. All right, in this case, I'm going to just revisit my geography class where, as an example, the teacher would put down a clear miler with a dark outline of the country Canada, as an example, with little dark lines indicating where the separate provinces were. All right. Then the teacher would put down uh, another clear miler that had some text on it, and the text would say Ontario, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, you know, all that kind of stuff, naming all the provinces and territories, and would place that on top. And then the next would be, say, red dots that indicated uh, cities in the different provinces that had certain population. And then the blue dots would be smaller cities, and then the green dots would be just the capitals of each province. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So to get away from that and come over to this thing here, because this is the image that we're going to be using. You saw me pop this up quickly a second ago, where I've got a background layer. And then in order to make that other image, all right, I had a confetti layer sitting here. And then underneath that, I had a small balloon layer uh, on, on top, I mean, on top of that. On top of that, I had the large balloon layer. And then on top of that, in the stacking order, I had the happy birthday layer. So I'm just trying to show you that the box to the far left is the topmost layer. Then underneath that, is the large balloon layer. And uh, 
all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so this is kind of layers. And if we were to start off doing stuff through this, if this was semi-transparent, I could put that down first. And then I'd put the confetti layer down. Then I'd put the small balloons because they were you know, behind the large balloons for depth perception. Then I put the large balloons down and I put the type layer on top at the end. Uh, depending on how I wanted my confetti to show up, I could take the confetti from being the second layer and put that on the very top layer and then it would look like the confetti is on top of all of the... And I'll show you how I did that or how that's possible uh, in the next movie. All right, so now that I've gone and dissected this document to some extent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that off and I want to show you the project that we're going to create. All right, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to bring up this one here called Spiral. I've called it Spiral in the handout. I've called it Celebration Image and whatever. All right, and I just wanted to show you this and what I used to create this. As uh, you're probably learning at this point in time, there's a dozen ways that people can approach these projects. All right, if you take a look at the layers panel over here, you can see that I have a folder set at the bottom and I have a folder set at the top. Folders are ways of grouping elements that are common for your image and all that kind of stuff. All right, so if I was to click on the disclosure triangle here for the spiral background, you'll see that all of these elements here are used to create that spiral visual effect that we have there. So that's the reason why I grouped them all inside there. Then what I did was I added a bluish fill layer and you can see that there's a little bit of a difference all right i wanted to lighten things up a little bit so that's what i chose to do so i have this bluish layer sitting on top of that then i have the individual uh, red green and blue balloons on their separate layers so i can move them around individually or uh, affect them separately if i wanted to all right, and then we have the happy birthday layer. So I can just turn this on and off. Now you can notice that I have this confetti folder here and the confetti folder is at the top of the layer stack there, which just means that it's on top of everything inside the Photoshop document here. It's on top of the balloons, it's on top of the text, it's on top of everything. If I wanted my confetti to be on top of the balloons but not on top of the text, all I have to do is drag this folder set in between these two layers and as soon as I see a double line come in between the two layers, I can release my mouse. There's the double line. I release my mouse. And now you can see that the confetti is now below the type. And if you look in the document, you'll see that there is no confetti on top of the letters themselves. If I wanted to make the uh, confetti be on top of the uh, red and green balloons, but not the blue, then I can just drag down to here and we have that. And if I wanted the confetti to not be on top of any of the individual elements in there, then I can do it this way. And if you take a look, you can see that there is some confetti showing through the actual balloon layers. And that has to do with the, 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 the density of the pixels on the individual layers, not the density of the layer itself. All right, now what I want to do is I just want to show you the separate pieces that were used to put this together. So I'm going to close this off. Now, one thing I want to point out is every time you make a change or you do something uh, that was different to your document than when you first opened it, you're going to see a little asterisk up there. That's a visual reminder that you've made a change and you have not yet saved. Because I don't want to save any of the changes that I've made here, when I close this, and I can close this by clicking on the little red uh, circle there or I can go under file and choose close. I'll be presented with a dialog box asking me if I want to save these changes. My answer is going to be no. All right, so now what I want to do is just come down under the window menu and choose the last option here, which is the pieces image. And these are the individual components that I use to make that other image. Okay, so there's my four individual balloons. They're on cream colored backgrounds as opposed to being displayed on transparency and there's a reason for that and all that stuff. We'll get to that a little bit later on. It's just another way for me to introduce color fill layers. All right, so here's the individual components that were used to make that and starting in the next movie, we will go through the process of starting to create that file.